When I was up at Hobima about almost two years ago, I was up there doing a workshop with the Hobima Four Bands, and one of my good uh, brothers there invited me to come to an all-night prayer meeting for his grandmother. She was sick with cancer. They'd taken her to medical doctors. The medical doctor said, we can't do anything for her. They'd gone to small boy camp, and they consulted, and they said, well, we know a good, a very good spiritual man who's a Navajo. And they gave them the name, and they called the man up, and he came. We went to the airport to pick him up, and my friend said, would you come tonight and sit with us? All the relatives are coming. So we went and sat. That uh, elder came, and I, 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 I just rem made me feel so good. You know, he didn't know anybody from there, but because of the spiritual relationship we have, he greeted everybody, shook everybody's hand. He came and sat down. The elder from Rocky Boy Reservation, who was kind of taking care of the prayers, said, well, brother, he said, when you're ready, he said, we'll go ahead and sing and pray. When you're ready, you let us know. He went and greeted that grandmother. Now, you know, there's one thing about standing and saying we believe in these things. If somebody has a cold, they're going to get well. But it so happened that I was placed right next to this elder woman. She was in a wheelchair. She had oxygen running into her nose. She was bleeding from the mouth because I had to keep adding her Kleenex. But I remember this man came in with such a beautiful, serene feeling, such a kind, generous spirit. And he shook her hand and he said, Grandmother, he said, you're going to be just fine. He sat back. Well, about 1 o'clock in the morning, he came over and through his prayers and the way he did that, he took out of her a piece of cancer about that big. He said, there's another one in here on this side. About sunrise, when that strength really comes, you know how our good dreams come about then. You know how that feeling is right before sunrise. Sure enough, he came back at that time. He took another big one, about a little bit bigger, this side out. And by 7 o'clock that morning, she was in bed. She was asleep. By that night, she was up eating, and by the next night, she was up doing dishes. But that morning, I had the chance to sit with him, with another good friend of mine from Rocky Boy, and my friend asked him, what is bad medicine? What's bad medicine? And he said, well, he said, in the 40 years I've been doing this, he said, I've been able to identify four kinds of bad medicine. He said, all of it, I don't care where I've been, comes from these four things. And I like to share this wherever I go because it, it brings it right down to earth, what we're dealing with here. The only thing holding us back. He said, the first kind of bad medicine, he said, are bad thoughts about ourselves or other people. Bad thoughts about ourselves or other people. And we know that. We can see scientifically they have these, you know, waves that go back and forth according to how we're thinking. But he said, if you're thinking bad thoughts about another person, it's just like taking a gun to them and shooting them. If you think bad thoughts about yourself, if you get up in the morning and look at yourself and say, yeah, you're ugly. <laughs> you're using bad medicine on yourself. And by the way, we weren't born like that. You see our little people, how they walk around? Well, I'll tell you what, nobody's told them they're ugly until we do. They know they're beautiful. They know they're sacred. I can think of myself. Gee, I thought I was doing just fine. I can still remember this to, to this day. I must have been about five or six years old. I thought I was great. I didn't pay attention too much to myself. I must have looked up in the mirror and said, great, it's good to be with you another day. I remember this other little friend of mine. Maybe I did something to hurt his feelings, but he came to me and says, boy, you have a big nose. Boy, I'll tell you that got me. And he says, you know, your nose is so big that there was a blizzard you could get inside and inside, uh, climb inside and save yourself. <laughs> well, you know, that, that, I remember that really hurt my feelings. My nose so big I could climb inside and save myself in a blizzard. And about a week later, I got a mole on the side of my nose. He says, God, where'd you get that wart in your nose? Now, you know, I wanted to go around the rest of my life with a big pillow on my face. The second kind of bad medicine. He said the worst is backbiting and gossip. Talking negatively about those who aren't around. He said it kills people. As dead as a doornail. And it does. And you know, it's kind of funny how we, can, how we learn to use this. You, know, you kind of, you kind of um, uh, know how it go goes, you know. 
because it's also the listening side. That's part of it, the bad medicine. And you know how we kind of run back and forth. I run over to Harley and say, say, Harley, did you hear about Gilbert Provost last week? Yeah, you should have seen him downtown. It was really something, yeah. <laughs> then I run over to Gilbert Provost. Hey, Gilbert, you hear about Harley? Boy. <laughs> or I go to Harley and I say, gee, Gilbert said you're no good. Boy, I get Har Harley mad, then I run to Gilbert and say, hey, Gilbert, Harley said you're no good. And then I get them both fighting and I run over to Bob and say, hey, look at those guys fighting. Aren't they no good? <laughs> Or we know how we like to encourage it. We love to encourage it. We love the juicy ones. I always often kind of like to kid, kid my um, blood and pagan relatives because all tribes have expression when somebody's really juicy. So if you ever go down their country, you know something really juicy, they're, all, they're always saying, Oh, Anya! Oh, Anya! Yeah, honestly. You know, we egg it on. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Wow. That's horrible. Oh, yeah. Oh. We can't wait to get home to tell the rest. <laughs> so that's the second kind of bad medicine, how we talk behind one another's back. The third kind of bad medicine, how we look at people. How we look at people. And you know how we can do that way? We hear about the dirty looks, the evil eye. And you know what it feels like? You'd be walking along, and somebody all of a sudden, oh, I don't know how many tribes have, but many tribes, one of the greatest ways you can show disrespect is this one. See, see if you remember this one. <laughs> and then there's this one. <laughs> and one we've really gotten good at is the no look. That's what I call the no look bad medicine. That is, here we are, relatives of people, working with every day in our tribal centers, and this is how we pass each other. <laughs> looking like we don't even exist. <laughs> now, we learn how to combine these bad medicine. We learn how to combine them. I might be sitting here with a group of friends here. We're talking about last night's hockey game. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pick on Gilbert. He's clear over there. So and the old Gilbert walks in. So Gilbert and I are kind of angry at each other or something. I'm kind of angry at Gilbert. So here I am talking away. And I'm saying, gee, that was sure a nice hockey game. Yeah, I love that hockey game. It was really good. Yeah, gee, you sure made a nice shot last night. Of course, what am I making Gilbert think? I'm making him think we're talking about him, and not only am I making him more of an enemy of me, I'm making him an enemy of everybody I'm talking about, and they don't even know it. They don't even know that I'm making him an enemy. So that's the third kind. We begin combining it. And the fourth kind, finally, is how we talk to people. How we talk to people. Like the one, God, you're ugly. We hear that one. Yeah, you're stupid. These four kinds of bad medicine, I don't, you can take, are the source of all these things. You know, and a lot of times we want to make that, that um, somebody's going out behind this tree and poking pins in a doll that looks like me. When really it's those bad thoughts the backbiting and jealousy, the bad looks we give each other, and how we talk to each other. It's breaking our back, because I really believe that if we can overcome these things, and we will overcome this fact of turning our hurt on one another, the victory is going to come much, much faster.